All right, we're going to do a rigid home on the right side of the motor. I got the left side done already. So if I can get this little bugger to cooperate. I'm just using a parts cleaner as my lubricant. Make it a little bit tighter. Again, you always want to make sure you're doing up and down motion. My spout fell off, otherwise I have a spout down there. All I'm doing is I got a big mess, but oh uh, well. shadows out that's to be expected. The cylinders are pretty round. It's hitting pretty evenly all the way around, so that's cool. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, like I said before, or depending on what order I put these videos together, after I got done uh, rigid honing it, it makes like a real, and you know, cutting the lip off, it makes kind of a sharp, you know, edge in the top of the cylinder. So I use my broken file here, and I just knock off, knock the lip off all the way around, carefully, obviously not to gouge in, hence why it's broken. It's a little coarse, but it works. And you just want to, you know, just chamfer that little bit of an edge, you know, like a 45 degree angle, evenly all the way around. I mean, if this block is actually being machined, you know, bored out at the machine shop and then they do the final hone, that leaves a really sharp edge. They'll go through if it's a good machine shop and they'll bevel that for you. But I, <laughs> trying to find a good machine shop lately is getting really hard. So, and the last motor I got back at a bevel my own because they didn't do it. But we're not going to get into that story because I'm still kind of pissed off about that ordeal. But, you know, just chamfer each cylinder. And when you go back with the ball hone, it'll kind of smooth that out as you bring the ball in and out. So, that's what I'm doing. So we're going to show a little ball honing in action here. I usually oil these up before I do it. Some people do them dry, some people do them with mineral spirits. I just do it with oil. Sometimes it takes a couple times, you know, up and down, get it the way you want it. This one doesn't look too bad. Maybe a little bit more yet. Hit it one more time. I 
Obviously you want to keep it spinning until you get it out, otherwise it just makes vertical lines in there. You don't want vertical lines, you want a cross hatch. Yeah, that's acceptable. I can handle that. Cool. So these two are all ball honed up for the most part. It's ready to go back together for the cylinder part. Still got to clean the truck or the block up yet. But we'll do all this gritty stuff, then we'll rinse it down once. It doesn't pay to rinse it down 15 times. So I got to flip it over and do the other side. Next thing I usually do is I take a like a burr remover tool <clears throat> and just run through here and just taper all the holes for the bolt holes. I already did them. I just forgot to turn the camera on. So next up, to run a tap through all the holes, you gotta the old glue and all the other stuff out and just kind of clean them up. Put the old drill on safety and obviously you gotta be careful if you do it this way. <clears throat> but it's a lot quicker than doing it, you know, the other way. And that is that. The only way to do that. Well, like I said, you gotta be careful. Otherwise, you get to do it the old fashioned way, you know, and get carpal tunnel. So, with that being done, scrape up the deck a little bit and give it a quick scotch bright. I already got the uh, left side done already. So, it's just about looking like store bought, which is what we want. So once I get that side done, then I'll probably scrape the block down, get all the big chunks of booger off, get the gasket off in front. Cam bearings, I haven't decided if I'm going to replace yet or not. They look really good, so I might just leave them in, but it doesn't take that much to pop new ones in, so I might just do that anyways. And then I'll clean up the bottom of the block, and then I still got to poke out the freeze plugs, get them out, and then uh, wash the block.